If you clicked on this video, it's because you care a lot about your in-game performance. You probably want the most frames, the most responsiveness, and more than likely the most kills on the leaderboard. Well, we're going to be covering some critical settings that you need to change, whether it's your PC, PS5, or Xbox. And this is kind of not just exclusive to Modern Warfare 2, but all games that you play. It will help improve your performance, improve your stability, and improve your competitive advantage. Now, this is kind of a part two to a Modern Warfare series that I'm doing for graphic settings, but this applies to any game. If you haven't seen part one, I go through every individual setting on Modern Warfare 3, where I go through and I explain what setting gives you the most benefit in terms of visual acuity and quality without actually torching your FPS. So if you haven't seen that, that'll be linked in the pinned comment and the description. You don't have to do either one of those first or second. You can do these in either order. So before we get on to something Xbox specific, let's cover big picture for all three platforms. Okay. Number one, I, you got to say it. Some people don't know. Make sure you're not playing on Wi-Fi. Okay. <laughs> Plug in an ethernet cable. Some of these ethernet cables are like 100, 200 feet long. They can go all the way across your house. It is worth it. I've done it across my entire apartment in the past. Okay. Run a freaking ethernet cable. It's going to help with your stability and it's going to help with your ping. On top of that, if you can use a gaming monitor, Okay, I know that's not ideal for everyone's setup, but it does have a significantly lower input latency. It will likely have a higher refresh rate. But if you are using a living room TV, go onto your living room TV and make sure you have enabled game mode. Most modern TVs have a game mode that's going to reduce your input latency to help the game feel a little bit snappier. Now, make sure you're using the correct HDMI cable when you plug into your TV. OK, you need to be using an HDMI 2.1. It more than likely came with your Xbox PC or PS5, whatever it came with. And make sure you're plugged into the correct port because some ports on your TV don't support 120 hertz or they don't support a massive bandwidth. And it's just a limited bandwidth HDMI. So make sure you are plugged in to the max performing HDMI outlet, whether it's on your PC or your monitor or your TV. Also, for both HDMI on TV and on your monitor, make sure look up a YouTube video and just go through and figure out these specific settings for your TV or for your monitor to be the most optimized for gaming, because some of them may be bright, colorful, but causing some input delay, which you don't want for competitive gaming. So that wraps up the general tips. Now I'm going to break this video up into chapters. If you appreciate that, make sure to drop a like real quick before you scan around and subscribe for even more. Now we're going to cover Xbox first. Now for Xbox, the nice thing that this platform actually does, it tells you everything that you need to do up front. I've been a huge PlayStation fan and I've pretty much only played PlayStation my entire life, except for like the OG Xbox. But this is pretty nice. Whenever you go to your Xbox, all you have to do is go to general and then go into TV and display options and you can go to 4K TV details. You don't have to guess. You don't have to look up your TV. It'll actually show what your TV supports. So in my scenario, it supports 4K at 60 hertz. Well, that's because I'm going through an Elgato capture card and that's the limit. This monitor is 4K 160 hertz, but that's a different story because I have to pass it through a capture card. So that will let you know kind of where your standard is. And that's another important thing about making sure you're using the right cable because some cables, some HDMI cables that you dug out of a closet will support 4K 60, but maybe you're using a nice gaming TV. It won't support 4K 120. So make sure you're using the right cable. Okay. From there, it'll tell you, you know, kind of other things that you're, you can do in terms of HDR, et cetera. All right. So from there, I personally play in the highest display rate possible. So I play at 4K Ultra HD whenever I'm playing on my Xbox. And then also make sure you go into your refresh rate and then put that as high as you can that your TV can support. Once again, if I were to put up to 120 hertz, it's just going to bug out. It's not going to be supported on the system. If I were to be plugging straight into my monitor and not through my Elgato, it would be supported. Once again, you can go through and you can calibrate your TV, but I would encourage you to go through some YouTube videos specific to your TV set it up for that first so you have the perfect settings for your tv from there we're going to go over to the video mode section and this gives us some additional information okay so we want to make sure that we have variable refresh rate always on that's going to allow the vsync technology to basically help to merge frames if we don't reach the 60 hertz on our monitor it will kind of allow us to prevent some nasty screen tearing also, if you can, and my Elgato does not support this, turn on allow auto low latency mode. What that does, it will allow the Xbox to communicate to your TV and basically say, hey, bro, you're going into game mode, whether you like it or not. So that way it has the lowest possible refresh rate. Now, obviously, it maybe if you're watching a movie or watching Netflix off your Xbox, you may want to turn that off if you're noticing a diminishing quality. But more than anything on the gaming side, 
I want the lowest input latency possible, especially if I were to be on Xbox competing on crossplay against cracked out PC players, PS5 players that spend way too much money on their stuff. It's going to help narrow that competitive gap. Now, for Xbox, that's about all you can do. They have a really nice system where basically they don't use Bluetooth because they have a more reliable and fast wireless system. So Xbox controllers, as far as I know, don't actually use Bluetooth. They have their own proprietary wireless system. Now, obviously, you can plug it in if you have any issues with your connection. But in general, this is about all I can do to beef up an Xbox. If you guys have any suggestions, I will down in the pinned comment add to it. So if you know any way that can kind of beef up your Xbox on top of these settings, please let the rest of the Academy know down below so that way we can help each other out. All right, let's move on to the PlayStation settings. Now for PS4 and PS5, it may look a little bit different, but largely the file menus will take you in the same direction. So for most of this, okay, we're going to go into screen and video. For our video output, we're going to make sure our resolution is set to automatic. Hey, as you can see here, it's set to 1440p for me, but I actually prefer to game once again in 4K because I want the quality to be the highest for you all. This will all be dependent based off of your monitor or your TV, so make sure you have it set correctly. Just like Xbox, it's going to kind of automatically determine what your actual output signal is. And if you want to verify, you can go up to here and you can see I am rocking 4K at 60 hertz, which is exactly what I want. Okay, for variable refresh rate, we're going to go ahead and set that to automatic. Once again, that'll prevent some of that screen tearing and help us out if we aren't reaching the full potential. I don't mess around with applying to unsupported games. That might be something you can fool around with. But for the most part, uh, Modern Warfare is going to automatically support that. If your TV does support 120 hertz, it will automatically apply it. Make sure that is not set to off. A lot of modern smart TVs do support 120 hertz, and especially modern monitors do as well. Or auto low latency mode, we're going to have that set to automatic as well. My TV doesn't support it. Once again, it's because I'm using an Elgato, but that's one of those things where it will force that TV into the game mode, regardless of whether or not you set that setting manually. It'll basically, through the HDMI, it can send information to the TV. It will force it into the game mode so that way you know you have the lowest latency. So the 4K video transfer rate, this is one of the things that we were talking about earlier with making sure that we have the correct HDMI plugged in. I've had some issues, okay, where I've been using a bad HDMI and I've had to set it to minus one or minus two in order to get that full video through. If you notice your screen is like flickering and turning black, it's because there is an issue with the amount of bandwidth that that individual cable has. And that's why we wanna make sure we're using an HDMI 2.1 as we're pushing it from our PS5 up to the TV or gaming monitor. Okay, from there, we're going to go out to this menu and we're going to go down until we see saved data and game app settings. From there, we're going to go to game presets and we're going to make sure that we are in performance mode. Now, once again, if you're going to play some cinematic game like God of War or something, throw it into resolution mode. But for an FPS and we're talking about performance here, make sure it's in performance mode and that will make sure you're getting the highest frame rate and maybe you sacrifice a little bit of detail, but in a first person shooter, that's what we're focused on. So big picture, this makes it to where the render delay in terms of the actual generation of those frames will be less, but we wanna make sure we also have low input delay as well. So we're gonna back out, we're gonna go to accessories, and then in general, we have one of two options. If you're only plugging your controller in and you're listening through, whether it's a USB headset or maybe you're plugged in directly into your controller, I just turned off my Bluetooth completely. Now, when you turn off Bluetooth using this setting, you'll have to reset your PS5. Now, if you don't want to do that, you can also go through and if let's say you have a Bluetooth headset, but you want to have your controller wired because obviously our wired controller will have not only more consistent communication with the PlayStation, but also faster communication with the PlayStation. We would go here into controller and we would manually change it to use the USB cable as opposed to Bluetooth. But if we just want to get all Bluetooth out of the system, no matter what, we can go in here, advanced settings and turn off Bluetooth altogether. That's what I've done. And it made a huge difference when I was playing in the beta. It felt a lot snappier, kind of like I was playing on an overclocked controller on PC. And then finally, what we're going to do is we're going to go into system and we're going to go into HDMI and we're going to make sure we have enable HDCP turned off. Basically, without getting too technical, what HDCP is, is it protects content data. So like copyrighted data. So like Netflix shows, Spotify playlists, and it prevents it from being like captured by a capture card. Right. And so it protects it. Think of it. Think of it like you've got this file. OK, like this this frame of a video and then it gets an HDCP shield around it. That HDCP shield then goes all the way to the TV. The TV says, OK, you're safe here, decodes that HDCP shield and then plays the video. 
Well, when it's providing that protection over that file or over that video, that's input delay. So you're gonna go ahead and disable HDCP, which then allows that video to go through raw, but it's going to limit some of the content that you can do. So things like Spotify, um, Netflix, you're gonna have to manually turn this on. So if I were you, I would just turn this off when you're gaming and then enable HDCP whenever you're consuming content. I know it's kind of a pain in the butt to do that, but it makes for less input delay, which is really what we care about in a video like this. And that's all I've got for the PlayStation settings. If you guys know anything that also has improved your performance over on PlayStation, make sure to comment down below to help out fellow members of the Academy, and I'll make sure to include that in the pinned comment as well to help everyone out. Without further ado, let's get on to the PC settings, and this is where things get a little bit cosmic, okay? So I'm gonna break it down into three levels in terms of like accessibility. Level one, update our drivers, okay? Whether it's for AMD or more than likely NVIDIA, you're gonna go onto the NVIDIA website. All you have to do, open up a new tab. And if you were to just type NVIDIA drivers, okay, you're gonna go into driver downloads. You're gonna open up, you're gonna select. So for me, I have a 40 series. Make sure you don't select notebook. 40 series, 4090, you're gonna search. And the most recent drivers, I've benchmarked them against some of the more traditionally stable ones. Like there was a 53.6.99, which was notoriously stable for Warzone because this game is notoriously unstable. This new driver kicks ass, okay? And, it, and it's treating me very well in terms of benchmarks and stability. So you're gonna download that, you're gonna install that. If you want GeForce Experience, have it. I would opt not unless you're doing recordings and you probably know you're gonna have a minor performance hit if you are using GeForce Experience. So once you update your drivers, make sure you fully reset your PC, and then let's get into Windows settings. Okay, so for the first Windows settings, we're gonna go in, we're gonna go to game mode, just type in game, go to game mode settings, and this is kind of flipped from what it was a while back. Game mode now actually does provide about a one to 2% gain in performance, so make sure we have game mode turned on. That is not game bar, but game mode we're going to have on. From there, we're going to right click our desktop. We're going to go to display settings and we're going to scroll down until we see graphic settings. In graphic settings, we're going to turn off hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. When you change this, you will have to reset your PC. I know we used to have this on, but it torches. Maybe not overall FPS, but micro stutters like crazy. I was having a really bad issue a couple weeks ago with my with my PC stuttering like crazy. And this was one of the biggest causes of that. Turn hardware accelerated GPU scheduling off. From there, you're gonna once again, click down low. You're gonna type in power and you're gonna go to choose a power plan. Now, this is something I've done with one of my PC optimizers, but I have bit some highest performance. Whatever you have, RIP the environment, RIP your power bill, okay? Ultimate performance, highest performance, whatever you can select, we wanna make sure our GPU, CPU are getting the power that they need in order to supply what is a very demanding game with Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone. From there, we're gonna start working on the NVIDIA control panel. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of knowledge on the AMD side. I'm sure there's some dedicated videos out there, but bear with me because there's some more Windows settings that we're going to be adjusting. Okay, for the NVIDIA control panel, okay, we're going to go over to adjust image settings and we're going to use advanced 3D image settings. From there, it's going to take us to our 3D image settings as well. Now, we're not going to mess with a lot of stuff here, but we are going to mess with a few global settings. We're going to make sure our low latency mode is set to on, okay? From there, we're going to go down and we're going to go to our open, we're going to go to our open GL rendering GPU. Make sure you manually select your GPU of choice, your most powerful GPU, more than likely for me, it's a 4090, yours should show up there. For power management mode, we're gonna prefer maximum performance. And then for shader cache size, I keep mine on driver default. Some people suggest if you're having stuttering, change that to 100 gigabytes, but I'm not having any issues, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep it there. As we begin to scroll down, we're gonna look at vertical sync. If you are using a G-Sync or V-Sync monitor, you wanna have that on. You can also set up G-Sync in through here as well, but ideally, you want both of those off because G-Sync and V-Sync are used when you're not reaching your monitor's refresh rate. So it's trying to create and interpolate those in, like intermediary frames. Like if you're only getting 140 frames, but you have a 160 hertz monitor, it will use technology to create those frames to make it feel like a fluid 160. Unfortunately, in order to do that, it takes input delay because it's generating new frames that aren't happening natively. So ideally you have both of those off, including G-Sync off, because that's gonna give you the best performance. You're gonna go in here, you're gonna go to change resolution, make sure you have it set to PC, your native resolution, and then make sure you have your highest refresh rate set as well. I use my NVIDIA color settings and I have them set as you see here. I wouldn't suggest going into 10-bit unless you know what you're doing. And there's a lot more stuff you can do inside of the NVIDIA control panel, but 
it, without getting too into the weeds, these are some nice, simple things that you can do that are going to make a significant difference in your gameplay. And then finally, and I know this is only level one, what we're going to do is we're going to go in, we're going to type command prompt. Okay, we're going to right click. You have to run it as administrator. And then from there, what we're going to do is we're going to type in SFC space slash scan now. And it's actually a really quick process. What it basically does is it goes through and it looks for corrupt files inside of your system. Depending on your CPU, GPU, and the number of files you have, it might take a little bit longer. But as you can see here, it's already 25% of the way done. It looks for those corrupt files and then automatically fixes them. And then sometimes you have some issues with your system that you don't even know about that are causing issues. So rather than, you know, sometimes you have to do a full Windows reset if it's been a minute since you've, you know, optimized your PC. And if it's running a little sluggish, a full Windows reset does help. But this can sometimes help clean it up as well. So as you can see, we're going here 99%. Windows did not find any integrity violations. If it does find them, it will automatically fix them. It will say it found the corrupted files and it fixed them. And it can oftentimes help get some additional performance out of your PC just because you have some corrupted files laying around. All right, moving on to level two. Okay, this isn't too cosmic, but it's something I feel like most people could accomplish on their own without messing things up too bad. Okay, you're going to go down and you're going to type in system information. You're going to click that and it's going to open up this page right here. From there, you're going to go ahead and look at your base board product. That's your motherboard. Okay, so you're going to open up and you're going to say, okay, ROG Maximus Z790 Hero or whatever your individual monitor is or motherboard is. From there, you're going to go in and you're going to go into support. You're going to go into drivers and tools. You're going to go into BIOS and firmware. You're going to download all of this as well as typically there's a lot more here, but most importantly, probably is going to be the BIOS and the firmware. Okay. There's some guides out there on how you can actually do this. If you're unfamiliar with it, that's why I call it level two. I would encourage you to look up some specific videos on this, but what it, this will allow you to do oftentimes is with BIOS updates, it will allow you to operate your Ram at a higher frequency and a more efficient timings because of updates that they've done throughout the system. They've been testing it. They've been working with Ram manufacturers to figure out what is the perfect timing. So when you go through and you look at your task manager, you can see I'm rocking with my memory, I'm rocking 7,400 megahertz. Technically, my RAM is clockable up to 7,600 megahertz, but I actually have really tight timings at 7,400 and my PC is running like a dream. Okay, so once you've downloaded the BIOS, once you've updated your drivers, I would wait. Before you update your BIOS, I would take a picture of any custom settings that you have in your BIOS. If you've had someone tweak your PC in the past, if you've had someone do custom timings, okay, oftentimes when you update your BIOS, you lose all of that information. You lose all your CPU clocks, you lose all of your RAM timings, you lose all that. It happened to me the other day. So I would encourage you to just go through with your phone and go through all the sub menus if you've had someone optimize your PC. If not, update the BIOS, boom. And then from there, at the bare minimum, without it getting into too much overclocking, GPU overclocking, any, any craziness there, throw on XMP. If you're not familiar with what that is, you're basically going to go into your BIOS. I can't show you here because it wouldn't be captured on a capture card. You're going to go into your BIOS. You're going to go into your advanced. You're going to activate from memory. You're going to activate XMP profile. It basically is a default profile known by the motherboard manufacturer to work with that RAM to basically operate that RAM at its default settings. So that way, if you have 7,600 megahertz RAM, you will get 7,600 megahertz in game. So. I'm probably talking like mansplaining to some people in chat or in, in, in the video. You guys probably know exactly what I'm talking about, okay? At the bare minimum, if you don't know what I'm talking about, update your BIOS, throw on XMP, and it's probably going to run better because I've seen people, I've seen streamers and competitors running with their PC at like default speeds of like 2,600 megahertz or like 3,200 megahertz, and, they're, and their PC runs like crap, and they wonder why. So update your drivers update your BIOS. Before you update your BIOS, make sure to take a video of everything so you know what's going on. And then you can manually reapply those settings. When we get to level three, that's when you start looking at things like possibly getting your PC optimized. Okay. There's a lot of snake oil out there. There's a lot of people who act like they know what they're doing, but actually don't know what they're doing and possibly could hurt your PC. The benefit of actually having someone optimize your PC isn't them overclocking everything and it's, and it's going to blow your system up. When I got my PC overclocked, okay, not only did I get higher frame rates in game, not only did I get less stutters in game, not only did I get more stability in game, 
my CPU, they were running less voltage, which means it was running less hot, which means the actual lifeline or lifetime of my CPU is going to be longer because it's consuming less energy, it's having less energy pushed through it, and it's running cooler. Okay, but at the same time, I was able to get higher clock speeds, which means more performance in game. The exact same thing happened to my, uh, to my RAM. RAM default XMP settings push a lot of power and very sloppy timings, but we can pull back some of that power and get tighter timings. And there's a lot of people out there, um, good companies like FPS Hub. Uh, I also, they, they work with Spence Built, which is a company I really like working with as well. Um, if you want to get your PC optimized, they have some optimization service as well. I've had good luck with Stents Built. I recently had my PC optimized by FPS Hub. Another company that I really, you know, vouch for would be Paradox Customs. Um, they do a lot of nice work with Paradox uh, with PCs as well. And then also uh, Power GPU is someone that I would vouch for as well. I'm not sponsored by any of these guys. You guys know I'm sponsored by Asus. Most of these people are using Asus products inside of their builds. But if you want to get the most out of it, more than likely you spent three grand on your PC, two grand on your PC, and legitimately an hour of your time and maybe a hundred bucks or 50 bucks with one of these guys can oftentimes get you 10% more performance out of your PC, less crashes, less struggles. And I know I'm kind of rambling on here, but I it's, it's the truth. You go with a good company, like some of the ones that I just vouched for right there, they will treat you right. And they oftentimes will get you a lot of performance out of your PC. But ladies and gentlemen, I know I threw a lot at you, okay? Definitely, everyone should be doing through level one. Level two, it gets a little bit complex when you start updating the BIOS because you have to drag and drop the BIOS into a, into a motherboard or a, into a flash drive, and then you have to open up your BIOS, and that's a lot for some people. So if that's not for you, don't do it. Some people can help you out with that over on the level three. If you want to get your PC optimized, they'll do all of that for you, okay? Hope you guys enjoyed this. For my PC friends, let me know. Okay, if you've reached the end of the video and there's anything else that other players need, drop a comment down below. If there's something you've done that's really helped you out, I've, I'll have a pinned comment of everything for Xbox, PS5, and PC that has helped out with performance. But that is the basics for me without going full optimization wizardry, giving you RAM timings and all that nonsense. I don't have that knowledge. That's level three. Talk to a professional. But this should get you off at a really awesome start. If you've made it this far, drop a like on this video because what other gamer streamer is putting this type of effort into a video other than wow look at this custom class you should use it make sure to like and subscribe for more loadouts okay there's a lot of time to research into this video subscribe okay usually on this channel we have coaching where you guys send me your gameplay for warzone and i review it we're gonna be doing more of that when warzone drops in december but in the meantime you guys are the type of audience that like this techno wizardry really getting into the weeds and getting the most out of our game so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you're new here make sure to subscribe and i'll see you all on the next one peace